Right, okay, uh, we've got another crappy wet day going on here today. Um, so I've got another little project we're going to work on. Anyone that's been watching the channel for a while um, is going to recognise that this is a Clayton water break. Um, exactly the same as what was in the old dyno. Um, if you haven't already seen them, I've got a whole series of videos where we went through and rebuilt one of these. Um, so this is basically a break from a friend of mine. Um, he's got trouble with the water break. Um, so obviously after extensive searching around trying to find someone to work on it, um, he basically came to the same conclusion as I kind of did, um, in that there isn't really anyone that touches them anymore. Um, so I'm going to get it up on the bench and we're going to start taking it apart and work out what's going on. Um, I'm hoping that we've just got sort of problems with the seals and the ceramic seals and bearings um, and we're really praying that we haven't got major damage to the stator or the rotor um, because finding parts for these now is basically impossible. Um, they're, they're so old now and that they're all sort of shot or rusted out or still in use here and there. Um, but very, very hard to find parts for, hence basically everything in ours we had to custom make or buy and retrofit one way or the other. Um, so we'll get it out of here and we'll get it up on the bench and start taking it apart and see what we're dealing with. Right then, uh, so as a bit of a refresher or a, um, to anyone who hasn't sort of watched any previous videos on these things, um, this is a water brake, um, so much like the retarder, or any current retarder on our current dyno. Um, so this is what applies a load or a, you know, a force against the rollers. Um, to load up the car or engine or whatever it's fitted to. Um, but this, instead of using electric like our current dyno, these actually use water, um, a bit like a torque converter in front of an Autotrans, um, which is obviously full of oil. This is full of water, but you have a, a fixed stator and a, and a rotating rotor. And by adjusting the amount of water um, in there, it, it increases or decreases the load on the input shaft over here. Um, so what you've basically got here essentially, um, obviously your input, input shaft is over at this side, uh, this is just a mount, it's obviously able to rotate because then the idea is the water brake itself, when it loads, is able to spin and apply force to the torque arm which is this piece sticking out the side which would then be attached to the load cell in the dyno. Um, I've gone over all of this in previous videos so I won't go into too much detail um, but what we're basically looking at here is this end here under this alley um, cover is the stator and rotor housing so that's where the main action goes on. Um, this section over here is a big heat exchanger, lots of copper coils inside here so that's where the heated water which is inside the brake is circulated um, and you then have a main in and out on each side and that is basically what takes the heat away because obviously you're absorbing a huge amount of energy here um, and that has to be converted into something um, and in this case it's heat which goes on here so that's to carry the heat away. Um, so really the main thing I'm interested in right now is this end um, and we're really hoping that we haven't got a serious serious damage to anything in here. Um, I believe we have got a vibration problem um, which I'm hoping is bad bearings and not a, an, a falling apart stator or rough, sorry, rotor. Um, so what we're going to do is I'll see if I can get out this um, a thermo valve here so this is basically what regulates the valve on the inlet of the um, of the heat exchanger uh, it, the idea being it closes until it brings it up to a suitable temperature um, to try and hold a fairly constant temperature of water in the brake because um, the temperature of the water actually affects the way it loads um, so you want it to ideally remain fairly consistent it's not critical I found with mine um, I actually bypassed them in the end because I didn't really feel they were necessary. Um, but we'll see if we can get that out either way. And then it'll be a case of taping the mounting bolts off and trying to slip this off, um, which can be quite difficult due to everything being rusty and obviously full of water inside. Um, obviously this is where it really pays dividends to have good coolant or anti-corrosion additive in your water. So we'll find out what, what, the, what this uh, particular brake's past has, has had in its, in its time by removing that cover and finding out. Okay, um, so that's got that front cover off, so that exposes the rotor. Um, good news is that it's looking, on initial inspection, like we've got a relatively decent um, brake, or at least there's a lot less um, corrosion here than I somewhat expected. Um, obviously around the bottom here, which is underwater, is, is worse, um, but it's not as bad as it could be. Um, so at least it's looking like it's going to be salvageable. Um, it seems like this is actually shimmed wrong as well, we've got too much clearance here, um, I would say. Um, but we've got it apart, so the next job here is going to be to whip these lock um, tabs out of the way and see if we can get the main retaining nut off um, and then try to pull this rotor off the shaft so we can really get in and have a good look at what's going on. Um, so I expect the next concern of mine is going to be let's hope that the heat exchanger is still watertight because um, they can also go open 
um, and obviously inter interfere fluids between the heat exchanger and the brake side. Um, obviously when that happens it's a disaster because you have no control over the brake. It will just be full right up all the time. Um, so we'll work at getting this nut off now. Um, obviously with it working in water all the time everything ends up in quite a state. Um, as you can see by the inside of the housing here. Um, so it'll probably be a bit of a mission um, but the key is just to go steady with everything um, rather than getting aggressive with it because you will break it. Um, getting that cover off was very tight. Um, it just took a lot of persuasion from different angles etc with the impact gun and it does eventually come off. Um, but it's all aluminium so you don't want to go putting too much strain on it because you will break it. Right, uh, so we're into the business end of things a bit here now. Um, I sort of raced ahead a little bit, I pulled the cover off as you saw before and I've just pulled the rotor off. Um, I have to admit it's the fact the way it's coming apart is um, promising. Um, I could tell literally as soon as it had come up, you know, a few mil apart from the stator, I, I could have a look in there. Um, and it's, yeah, okay, it's it's rusty, but you know, this is from the 70s. Um, it, considering its age, it's looking in pretty good shape so far. Um, this is probably, I would say, better uh, than my worst rotor when I got my Clayton. Um, obviously I was lucky enough to be able to actually replace replace them. Um, I was very lucky to get hold of those new old stock ones. Um, but these really are in, in generally um, very good shape. Um, what you can see rust wise really is just surface rust. I think by the time I you know chip them all up and get them all cleaned they're going to be nearly as new. Um, so there's certainly no problems there. What I was worried about um, was that the state of oh, sorry the roads becoming so rusty that fins had actually fallen off um, and that's what had thrown it out of balance um, but that's certainly not the case which is great news um, so the next step really is going to be just take the water feed valleys off the other end of the heat exchanger um, which will then give me access to the heat exchanger we'll then slide the heat exchanger off um, and then the next step will be to get the main centre bearing cartridge out of the um, state of housing which can be tricky right uh, so as with just about every project that involves shafts uh, the pullers out just to pull that um, dry flange off the end. Um, it's important that you don't bend or damage the edges of that um, because if you get any run out in those flanges you have all kinds of problems with vibrations um, so it's better to go easy on these things. Um, they, they always come off fairly easily with a puller um, just get lots of force on them and if worst case you might need to just clout it with a hammer uh, or an air chisel just to sort of shock it um, but normally just the puller itself, eventually they'll go bang and they'll pull off fairly quickly. Okay, right, that's the uh, heat exchanger off. I was actually trying to just remove the end plate, um, but the whole lot come off because they're seized together. Um, they have been disturbed, so I will need to get that apart because it's liable to leak. Um, but we can get that apart now it's out of there. Um, so that reveals almost a full strip down. Um, so I pull these studs out now, and then it's a case of getting this out of the core, um, which is threaded in there. Um, so we'll have to get it in the vise and get some fairly major force on that to get stuff moving, but it's coming along. Uh, right, the next little step, uh, I've got the shaft in the vise here now, um, so I'm going to remove the two bearings off here. Um, we're going to replace these, these look like original ones, um, and they're sort of grindy and just generally noisy, and as you can see the grease is completely dried up. Um, obviously there's been water getting in here. Um, so they're going to need replacing. So, right, so we've got the stator cleaned up here now, um, after quite a lot of time cleaning all the uh, crap out of all of the waterways and um, they were all full, absolutely solid with crud, which is quite normal. Um, we've got down to the vein entrances now. Um, the good news is I've managed to clear the fill port on one of the veins, um, that's now completely open and the water's flowing. However, the air bleed is absolutely solid um, and there's no way we're going to be able to clear that. Um, so as in one of my brakes, we're going to have to make some modifications here and basically remake the tunnel. Um, as stock, the air is basically actually has to go through the small hole that you can just about see in the bottom there. Um, then travels up through the vein and out of this little nipple here. Um, but the trouble is all of this gets choked up with crud and the passage is so small, there's just no way you can clear them. So what I'm going to do is chop that off, drill a hole through the vein, then drill a hole straight down through the casting at an angle to pick up that waterway in the back. Um, we'll then piece, put, put a piece of pop, copper pipe in um, to replace that sort of original feed. It'll then come out through the hole, bend backwards because you get an air pocket sort of in behind there. Um, so it needs to be pointing down um, and that will then replace that. 
Right, uh, so we just mounted this piece of pipe, so it's just a nice little bit of um, brake line, which we'll be using to carry the air. Um, obviously, I've just got it long at the moment to get an idea for what's going on. Um, so that is basically then up through a hole that I've drilled in behind the rotor vein, and through the vein, um, and it will all be sealed in with some chemical metal. Right, uh, we skipped ahead a little bit here. Um, I've just been working on this for the last few hours. Um, so everything is all stripped down now. Um, I've been basically just cleaning stuff up, which is kind of boring, so I haven't videoed any of it. Um, so that's the heat exchanger. I've actually put the two halves back together on top of each other, just because there's water dripping out of it. Um, but I've painted both of those, um, replaced the O-rings inside there. Um, and then we got the, uh, st the main stator housing cover. Um, I've removed everything I needed to from there. I haven't actually bothered removing the stub, which holds the bearing on the end, because there's literally no point. Um, it just bolts in the end, It's not. there's no seals or anything in there and we're not changing that bearing because it, it doesn't do anything um, it literally just moves about that much during operation just to allow the brake to move against the load, load cell um, I've actually made a few modifications to the valve there because the heat valve is, is the thermo valve is knackered um, you don't need it anyway um, it's fine to just let the water run through at a constant cold temperature um, so on the stator now we've had to, as I mentioned before I've had to replace the original air vent, which used to be through the vein and through that little dowel you could see, um, with a piece of copper tube. So there's now a piece of copper tube that runs up the backside of that vein through a hole that I drilled into the air pack um, uh, pocket on the back. Um, when we built up the weld around there with a hole on the backside, you basically get an air pocket in here um, when it's running, um, which allows the air to escape. Because obviously when you load the brake and add water, um, or unload the brake and remove water, um, air has to obviously come in or out uh, that the water is replacing. Um, so obviously if that isn't working, which is what was the case here, um, water can't get in, or at least it's incredibly slow coming in, because it's you're basically just building a huge rate of pressure inside. Um, so that's actually, that tiny little thing there is actually the fundamental problem with the whole brake. That'll be the main reason why it wasn't actually working. Um, but alongside that, the fill port here uh, was also blocked, um, so it'll only have been coming in the secondary fill, or the main fill, I should say, there. Um, so that'll be, like that. and obviously the bearings were original and horrible. Um, having said that, they would have gone on, you know, for the foreseeable future, but they're noisy, they've got play in them. Um, so there would have been some vibrations and stuff going on from that. Um, so really now it's time to start putting things back together. So you can see I just put some paint on some bits and pieces, um, just really to tidy it up. Um, it looks a bit cleaner and it's nicer to work with, um, and to try, try and protect some of the inner components for a bit. Obviously when I send this one back, um, I'll advise that they put some fresh, you know, drain the system entirely, uh, replace with fresh water and obviously some... Uh, anti-corrosion additives etc uh, to prevent there being major major problems like that in the future um, so the next step here really is to start putting the stator back together um, so on the back side now I had to pull all the core plugs out um, to gain access to all of these inner valleys um, for air and water um, so I've got some new core plugs here now to smash back in there to seal it all up back up again because obviously if that doesn't work the whole brake design is flawed completely um, and that's the uh, three core plugs in. Um, I like to just put a little bit of clear silicon around underneath those, um, just to be 100% that they seal up. Um, because it's not a situation where you want any weep at all. Right, I just put the shaft for the new bearings um, inside the centre now. Um, obviously it's important that you pack this thing solid with grease. Um, so what I do is I actually put the shaft in the uh, vise, put the two bearings on, and then basically just slobber the grease on the shaft with your hand until it's like the same size as the bearings. Um, and then obviously when you slide it in, um, the extra around the edges you can keep pushing in as you slide it. And then as as you get to the end, because you've got more grease than what will fit, it just squeezes out the end of the bearing. Um, it's good when that happens because you know it's completely packed solid. Um, so that'll keep everything lubricated in there. Um, so now let's put the end plate on. There's no ring that goes in there first to keep the grease in. Um, end plate, seal. Um, and then it's time to put that back on the stator. Okay, um, so I you can see the shaft is all back in. Um, I've remounted the stator, the back plate on it now. Um, so the retaining lock ring is in, um, so that holds everything nice and firm. As you can see, we've got nice um, free moving bearings now, unlike before. Um, so we're ready now to put the rotor assembly on. Um, obviously, oh, I've got to mention as well the ceramic seal, both halves of that are back in. Um, so the rotor is going to go on now. Um, and we'll have to get the shimming right to get this set up um, and then obviously the lock ring and there's the stator on sorry the rotor 
and the lock in chooch is on. So, uh, that's with the cover back on again. Um, so now we'll slide the heat exchanger over with some new O-rings. And that's pretty much it on that one. Um, put it all back together now. Uh, put the bracket for the load cell back on the side. Um, gave that a quick coat of paint as well just to tidy it up. Um, so yeah, it's all packed up with new grease, bearings, seals. Um, replaced that air bleed obviously and cleared all the waterways for the uh, load and unload as well as making up the new pipe for the uh, air bleed as you saw because that was completely knackered um, so ready to Sorry, go. a quick video really but I didn't uh, elaborate too much because obviously I've already done a uh, full rebuild on another one of these dinos in probably more detail so just a quick quick video really on another one just for the sake of it so uh, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully we can return back to that one in due course.